Good morning, everyone. Curious cat or villainous feline? The Cheshire Cat is considered a Disney villain, but why? I have looked into this quite a few times and it really just depends on the type of story that you are listening to or watching when it comes to Alice in Wonderland. There are many different adaptations of the Cheshire Cat where he is a more of a mischievous kind of a figure and somewhere he actually plays a much larger role such as in the Tim Burton's 2010 Alice in Wonderland, where Cheshire Cat, or as they just call him Chess, tends to actually be more of a standoutish character. He actually plays a larger role, he involves himself, and he assists in the takeover, or the dethronement, I guess you could say, of the big red-headed red queen, whatever we call her, I, I couldn't remember the name of it. But, why do they always consider him a villain? Cheshire Cat has his own section within the villainous grove of Oogie Boogie's Bash at Disneyland's California Adventure, but what has he done to consider make himself a villain, I guess you would say? Uh, apart from him being a mischievous feline, that's really all he does is he gives riddles, he, he tells stories, and sometimes he's a little mischievous by pulling some pranks, especially with his here and there signs. But what exactly makes him a villain? Just because you tell funny stories and you speak a little funny doesn't necessarily make you a bad person, or in this case, a bad cat. Now, necessarily, you find him running around scratching your drapes, such as our cats do here in the mansion, then yes, that would be considered a bad cat. But the Cheshire Cat has not done anything in particular to be considered a villain. So what is it that they do, or what is it that Disney looks at to make him a villain? Is it because he is an otherworldly feline that likes to pull pranks and is quite the jokester? Or is it because there's something darker about the Cheshire Cat that we do not know? Of course, in Alice in Wonderland, while in the 2010 version, Alice in Wonderland, the Cheshire Cat actually leads her straight to the Mad Hatter, the March Hare, and of course, the Dormouse, which are trying to start a coup against the big-headed Red Queen. Trying to delve into the method of Cheshire Cat's madness is probably the most uncanny and really it would be an entire video just in itself trying to figure out why he is the way he is. But as he says in the Alice in Wonderland, well, everything, we're all mad here. So there is no method to his madness. I guess a lot of people could say that the reason Cheshire Cat is considered a villain is because he does not outright tell anybody anything. He knows the inner workings of Wonderland. He knows what it's like and he knows how things run. But instead of just coming out and saying, hey, this is the Red Queen. She is evil. Avoid her at all costs. This is the this is the Mad Hatter. He is great. He is whatever. He, he's a little weird. He doesn't come out and say these things. He makes Alice have to experience them and have to he has to make her experience them in order for her to uh, to meet them. So instead of just a simple warning, he plays games. He he tells riddles. But I still don't believe that would make him a villain. I mean, he can be a little kooky, yeah, and of course, as I look back at the 2010 version of Alice in Wonderland, which is not necessarily the most well-received, it was a pretty good movie in my personal opinion. Uh, I think Tim Burton should probably take a step back and maybe work on some other projects, but hey, that's just my opinion. Um, I really do think that the Cheshire Cat in this particular story was a lot more intelligent than the... Well, I wouldn't say intelligent. Cheshire Cat's extremely intelligent. He just doesn't let off on it uh, right off the bat. You kind of have to figure things out when talking with him. But if you look at the Cheshire Cat from that version of Alice in Wonderland, he plays more of a guiding figure, ab or for sure. He definitely is more of a guiding spirit for Alice, as not only does he try to assist her in the cleaning of the wound from the Bandersnatch, he also decides to go ahead and bind the wound for her because he knows of what it can do to her. 
and then also offers to guide her to the Mad Hatter, the March Hare, and the Dormouse, while even telling her, you know, I'll take you there, but that'll be the only thing I do. And then, of course, that is not the only thing he does. He makes multiple appearances throughout the movie and the story to help Alice and the family. So, really, what is the point of of Cheshire Cat being a villain. Did Disney just run out of ideas? Is it because he's so mischievous and wacky that really he just kind of fits along there? They even have the Cheshire Cat on the float of the Disney villains during the parade of Boogie, Oogie Boogie's Bash. Oogie Boogie Boo Bash. There's too many bees going on in here. This, though, Foolish Mortals, is where we depart. I would like you to all go into the comment section below and let me know your opinions on the Cheshire Cat. Is he a villain or is he a hero? He does indeed have a bit of both qualities. Is he an anti-hero? Let me know below. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Ah, there you are. I see you made it to the end of the video. We quite enjoyed having you with us. Please remember to possess the subscription button. <laughs> we are dying to see you again. Oh, and don't forget to bring your death certificate. <laughs>